Still Whoa. clean. What? <laughs> hey, man, that dude right there looks like he's ready to start singing for 112 or something. <laughs> 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 well, he look like he roast you at lunch, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like, yo, Tony, yo, he don't want no problems. <laughs> nah, but at that time, like, and me and Joe were talking about this. Yes. Like, we didn't have Twitter. We didn't have YouTube. We, the social media didn't exist yet. So, like, being a, making a living on the indies, traveling on the indies wasn't really a thing. Like, yeah, I had that picture, Antonio. If, if I was lucky, if I sold two or three of them at a show, you know, mm-hmm. for $5 maybe, you know, but there wasn't merch like that. So, you know, it, it was really, really a grind back then, and nobody was making any money. They, everybody was. The, it, I had jobs where they would tell me, oh, you got to work on Saturday. Nope. Okay, I quit. See yep. you. I told you when I took this job, I can't work Saturdays. Well, you got to work this Saturday. Well, you got to find somebody to cover my spot. I'm out. You know? mm-hmm. So that that was a common thing. You know, as far as any specific, we our stories are the same. I don't have anything specific, mm-hmm. right? But I do have one story that I like to tell, and my buddy reminded me of it today. I used to work at City Furniture, and at the time, I was really working hard on trying to become a pro wrestler. I quit working on South Beach. I told my boy Sean Stanley, who was an indie wrestler, he was a manager in the warehouse of City Furniture. I'm like, yo, man, I got to get away from the beach, the bouncing. I just, I, I just need a different scene for a while. So I got a gig unloading trucks at City Furniture, and that job absolutely sucked, man. It was terrible. But quickly, I you know, got the, had some Haitian guys, some Central American guys, and I would just kind of organize them. Look, we could do this quicker if we do it like this. So somebody recognized, like, oh, this guy's got leadership skills. So they told the warehouse manager, Javier, hey, you know, this guy he might make a good uh, supervisor. So Javier sees me and said, hey, I've been hearing good things about you. If you want to move up in this company, come see me sometime. I want to be a pro wrestler. Yeah. I don't want to work here, but I need bread. And, I'm, mm-hmm. you know, supervisors make pretty good money at this place. And, it's conflicting. And the floor manager knew I was a wrestler, so he kind of looked out for me with weekends and, you know, scheduling and whatnot. So I went into the cafeteria and I saw Javier with his flunkies, his fellow floor managers. And I said, hey, Javier, uh, I'd like to talk to you about, you know, moving up. And he said, well, what do you want to do with your life? And I said, well, I'm going to be a professional wrestler, but until that happens, you know, until Vince calls, you know, I can work here. And he, this is exactly what he did. He looked at his buddies and went, Pfft. if Vince calls you to work for him, the doors are going to call me to be their lead singer. Okay, all right, that's cool, you know. Go to the loop. I got fired <laughs> not too long after that, yeah. you know. But fast forward, I came back down to South Florida to do a CCW show, my old home indie. WWE approved for MVP to come to CCW. And my boy Sean, of course, he came to the show. And I brought an MVP. No, Sean actually brought the MVP action figure. And I signed it, Dear Javier, mm. have the doors called you yet? And Sean took that to work. Mm. Mm. That's too good. Mm. That's too good. Oh, 